Good evening and welcome to the December 10th meeting of the Murfreesboro City School Board. We're glad to have those of you that are with us tonight, especially the boys basketball team from Scales and the girls basketball team from Black Fox with both of them in their own respective categories are the city school champions in basketball and we are glad to have you with us tonight. At this time, I'm gonna ask you to please stand as we have Marcus Malone, a fifth grade student from Bradley Academy, and Jackson Shoemaker, a sixth grader from Overall Creek to lead us in our pledge, followed then by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now our moment of silence. Thank you. All right, members of the board, you have seen a copy of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as printed? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. LaRoche. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Communications. Mr. Ben Torres, I think, is up first. And Ben, we're glad to have you with us tonight. Great Welcome honor. to the great city of Murfreesboro. Great city. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for having me out tonight. Thank you for letting us assist with your superintendent evaluation. I won't take up too, many, too much of your time. I took a look at the agenda and you have some outstanding students and some things here to celebrate tonight. So if you want to, in front of you, we have a copy of the performance evaluation of Dr. Gilbert. And I'm gonna start with the first page and I'm gonna highlight the, diff the different appendix areas. Appendix A, administrators' perceptions of the director's performance objectives. The overall score was a 4.05, and I wanna highlight number 15, the director's accessible to administrators. That was the highest score in this area. Hmm. Moving to appendix B, board assessment. The overall score was a 3.99, with the highest score being in board relationships. Two areas within board relationships tied for the highest score. Uh, Dr. Gilbert has a harmonious relationship with the board and is accessible to the board. And then finally on Appendix C, the annual objectives, the average score was a 3.77 and the highest being there are high expectations for teachers. After Appendix C, you have comments from administrators and board members that you can certainly look at and on the last page is the overall evaluation score. So when you take the three different scores and average them together, you have a 3.94 for the evaluation of Dr. Gilbert. Board members, any of you have any questions or comments for Mr. Torres? I don't know that he would know the answer to this. How does this compare to last year? I don't remember, I'll be honest. You know, Ben? I do not have last year's, but I can certainly get it Did to we you. Get copy? We got copies of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll look at it at home then. It's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir, very much. We appreciate you coming out in the cold weather tonight <laughs> and giving us this good report. Absolutely. We all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, and Thank hope you, you and all of your staff have a very Merry Christmas. You as well. Thank, Thank you. you. And Continuing on under communications, Ms. Trail. Mr. Chair, we have a lot of young folks with us tonight, so we're gonna start off just recognizing them. Uh, we wanna congratulate Black Fox's girls team and the Scales boys team, who are the MCS basketball champions for the 2019 season. I'm gonna get their coaches to come up, but first I wanna make sure that we do thank all of the coaches across our 13 schools, the cheerleading coaches, the players, the referees, parents, teachers, everyone who made the games a success. 
Uh, also, Mr. Ralph Ringstaff, who is the uh, athletic director for Murfreesboro City Schools. And again, without the police department, the transportation, we could not pull off uh, such a great season. So I want to go ahead and ask, um, I guess we'll, we'll start left. So I'm going to ask Ms. Johnson to join me and introduce her team as well as her coaches. And I think both coaches are with you tonight. Good afternoon. All right, so we're going to first introduce our coaches. Our coach is Coach Charlotte Caruso, if you'll come stand up there. And Coach Felicia Washington, come on up. <laughs> I'm going to call our JV boys players first, uh, who also won their championship, and then I'll call our varsity boys. Yes, when I call your name, if you'll come up and stand. All right, we have Isaiah Atwater. Why don't we have them all stand right up right here up in front okay. of us? Elijah Chestnut, Daniel Hernandez, Cruz Gardner, Destin Kellogg, Zane Constantine, Caleb Buckingham, Dalton Black, Daniel Zamines, and Joshua Humphrey. And this is our JV boys team, if you'd like to give them a round of applause. All right, thank you all. You can have a seat. And I'm now going to introduce our varsity boys players. Coaches, if you'll stay on up there. <laughs> Kamari Gaddy, Bryson Edging, Corbin Voyles, Abe Saucy, Jordan Slater, Travis Hogwood, Jordan Boyce, Tristan Thornton, Kendall Sykes, and Corin Collins. Did I miss anyone? And Cedric Davis, yes. If you all could give them a round of applause. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. <laughs> Since I see so many cameras out, I do want to remind all the parents that um, the city of Murfreesboro is face has this on their Facebook live stream. So if you want to go and Rewatch it, you certainly may do that, but they are streaming this program live now. So, also, I want to go ahead and give this over to Miss Tiffany Strievel with Black Fox. She and her coaches are with us today, as well as her girls. All right, we would like to thank our coaches. It was their first season, and they walked away with a championship. So, congratulations to Coach Pandy and Coach Parton. So, you guys may come on up and introduce your teams. <laughs> I just wanted to start off by saying thank you all for allowing us to be here this afternoon. This group of young women were such a fun group to work with, very dedicated and very driven. I was very pleased to work with them this season, and then I'm going to have Miss Pandy Camp introduce the girls. Thank you. Um, i also like to acknowledge the assistant coach who isn't here with us today, Elizabeth Hussick. So let me go ahead. Come on up, Neela. We have Peyton. Aaliyah, Shalia, Jazzy, and Amazia. Come on up. So this was my first time coaching, and I'm excited to, to have coached these lovely young ladies into the MCS championship. Thank you and congratulations to all of you coaches. I know you did a wonderful job. It's great to have uh, athletics and have our young people involved in that. Thank you. Absolutely. I think we, since we were kind of spread out, let's go ahead and just give them all one big round of applause. Yeah. It's so amazing to have a full audience back here. It's kind of <laughs> really well kind of makes me nervous. <laughs> well so we'll continue with our communications. I want to congratulate the following schools who have been named RTI 2B model of demonstration schools by the Tennessee Behavior Supports Project at Vanderbilt. On the gold level is Northfield, 
Silver Level is Black Fox, Bradley, Cason Lane, Hobgood, John Pittard, Overall Creek, Reeves, Rogers, and Scales. And on the Bronze Level is Discovery School and Irma Siegel. The Tennessee Behavior Supports Project acknowledges schools for exemplary implementation of response to instruction and intervention for behavior. The purpose of this recognition is to highlight and promote schools successfully implementing the RTI 2B so their practices can serve as models across the state. So we are very thrilled to acknowledge all of those schools for meeting those criteria. Also, the Nashville Music City Trikes visited Discovery School last week to work with second grade students to assemble an adaptive bicycle and present it to a community member as part of their STEM designation school community partners project. We hope to have more about this in the January board meeting, but I know a few of you did attend and see uh, as it was being built, so we're very happy to see that process. We'd also like to thank St. Paul's Episcopal Church and their Angel Tree Committee for providing a visit from Santa along with presents to the students at Mercury Court Pre-K. Santa. <laughs> Congratulations uh, to the following schools and students who competed at the State Beta Club Convention and walked away with awards. There's quite a few, so just bear with me here. Uh, Overall Creek, who sponsors Marion Evilsizer and Mallory Eaton and Kara Bergeron. The winners were second place science academic testing, Gabby Frank. Premier performance recognition was Ella Nunley. Fifth place quiz bowl, Annabelle Horn, Hudson Holt, Matthew Clements, and Carter Craig. From Case and Lane with sponsors Nicolette Sanders, Mona Thomas, and Julie Seymour, the winner was third place with third place solo talent, Teresha Johnson. And I understand it was absolutely amazing. Um, you have to think about a child standing up in front of thousands of people and doing a solo. Uh, it's amazing. Discovery School with sponsors Christy Mall, Jason Page, Eric Matthews, Beth Warren, Kelsey McKnight, Tierra Vance, and Amy Ritter. For third place in mixed media, Ashmi Patel. Fifth place, recyclable art, Grace Bella Sanders. Fifth place, fourth grade math, Zoe Boston. Fifth grade, fourth Fifth place, fourth grade science, Daniel Cho. Fourth place, poetry, Samantha Shaw. First place, elementary engineering, Spinnaker Ruley, Kilo Wagmeyer, Luca Gavar, Parker Linquist, and Joseph Rowell. Third place, two dimensional design, Janiah Porter and Emma Tussett. Fifth place, campaign skit, Evelyn Phillips, Ben Hogan, Joseph Rowell, Peyton Roeder, Truett Serbaugh, and Parker Griffin. So congratulations, we were represented very, very well at the Beta Club Convention. Big thank you to MTSU for making our Education Day game the biggest and best for the students of Murfreesboro City Schools. Since the inception of the MTSU MCS Education Game in 2012-13, MTSU has had the top single game attendance and average, as well as the average game attendance for Education Game nationally. So that's pretty impressive. This year our attendance was 11,415 and I assure you that our board chair can say every one of them were screaming at the top of their voice. <laughs> so <laughs> our average attendance has been 11,013. Uh, MTSU ranks higher than Virginia, Tennessee, Iowa State, Dayton, Texas A&M, Old Dominion, Montana, Wake Forest, and Texas. So those, that's the top 10 as far as education games. So we're really proud to be in that top of that list. We do appreciate the staff at MTSU, our Murfreesboro Police Department, our SROs. Once again, we couldn't do it without them and um, everybody else that really helps make this game work for us. Um, Trey Duke presented at the Mid-South Educational Research Association in New Orleans in November. His research topic was teacher migration. Why do teachers leave one school for the same or similar position in another school? Congratulations to Mr. Duke. MCS would also like to thank King's Men Sunday School class at First Baptist Church for the generous donation towards the purchase of Rover tickets. Uh, Mr. Lyles and his group used those Rover tickets to make sure that um, our staff, I'm sorry, not our staff, but our parents can get to parent teacher meetings and other events like that. Uh, congratulations to the winners of the quarterfinals of the Junior Chef Champion. The students were from John Pittard. They included Andrew Young, Mackenzie Stevens, Landon Robinson, Kylan Corlew, and Haven Rising. 
uh, we are continuing with our CEF Academy and we will have our next semifinals, I think in January <coughs> or February, maybe February. Murfreesboro City School students recently participated in the Fall Special Olympics bowling. Our system had seven schools and approximately 60 students at lanes, trains, and automobiles. Each student bowled two games. Uh, they were awarded uh, lots of, they all got an award, plus they had first through fourth place. It was amazing. It was just touching to see the kids out there bowling. And they were bowling mostly without bumpers, too, because bumpers weren't allowed in this particular competition. So congratulations to them and to our folks in our special ed department who really make this possible. Uh, Murfreesboro City Schools also wants to thank Calzonic and Shelbyville for doing a drive for coats, hats, and gloves for our students. We also want to thank MTSU, who will be doing another true blue coat drive for students on December 21st. This will allow us to have plenty of coats waiting for our students when they return from winter break. Uh, most of the time, those coats are given out at the request of uh, either principals, assistant principals, teachers, or social workers or guidance counselors. They simply call Mr. Lyles, and he gets it out to them. Um, the following grants were awarded last week by the Business Education Partnerships. Congratulations to the winning teachers and schools, Ms. Tammy Pirtle and Hope Paget at Black Fox, um, Angela Bunye at Discovery, Angela Pope at Irma Siegel. Uh, another, Angela actually won two at Irma Siegel. Gretchen Campbell also won two awards from Irma Siegel. They are really putting together their, their STEM lab. Um, also, Emily Clark from Irma Siegel and Kim Taylor from Irma Siegel. Craig, ne Craig Nevius from John Pittard, Suzanne St. John and Stephanie West from John Pittard, Sarah Golden from Mitchell Nielsen, and Felicia Jackson from Overall Creek. So those were BEP grant winners and they were awarded last week. Thanks to our MCS Transportation Department for an excellent job they did representing the city schools in the Christmas parade. I hope most of y'all get to see them. Congratulations to Barney, the safety bus. He was flying high as a reindeer. <coughs> um, the transportation department took this on about four years ago, and each year they won some type of prize for their entry. They do a fabulous job. This year they were at the Island of Misfit Toys. So congratulations to that team for winning the Spirit of the Community Award. Also, the Hobgood Rockets cheer team was part of the Sunday's Christmas parade. They cheered throughout the entire parade and they did a fabulous job and had a great time. On Friday night, uh, Salem Elementary Choir welcomed the lighting of the Christmas tree. They, did, they performed at the courthouse and uh, was part of that tree lighting ceremony. So we're glad we had lots of activities going on this weekend. Speaking of that, our food services prepared over 250 breakfast with Santa meals. Uh, we had the largest turnout we've ever had. That is an, for our employees and their children or grandchildren. It's a great event. We do it from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock. We feed them. We have photos. And just in general, a good time with our employees on that day. Thanks to Hobgood, Murfreesboro City had a very successful junior varsity competition on Saturday. Uh, the coaches, parents, grandparents, and Murfreesboro Police Department had a tremendous day. It's nice to let the varsity get out and play as well. Um, so that's always a fun day for them. As a reminder, Discovery School application deadline is Wednesday, January the 8th. Applications will be accepted for students in all grade levels. Students must be five years of age by August 15th to apply for the kindergarten. And that would be, in general, you have to be five by August 15th. Information about the Discovery School application can be found online. That's the easiest place to find all the details at discoveryschoolexplorers.net, or you can call the Discovery School and they can walk you through the process. Finally, I'd like to congratulate Anna Piercy, kindergarten teacher at Irma Siegel, and Ali Stovall, first grade teacher at Scales Elementary, for being chosen as one of Murfreesboro Magazine's top teachers. That is my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am, very much. Some wonderful news and some wonderful accolades for a wonderful group of, of people in our in our school system. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we have consent items. Do I have a motion to approve consent items as printed? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Barton. We have a second. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Any discussion, question? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none, thank you. All right, action items. 
Your first action item is uh, concerning the calendar for next year. If you, if you look at the calendar, um, there were some things that the teachers and principals felt very strongly about. Um, the full day of professional development that they have, that's really important to keep. The full day of parent-teacher conferences, really important to keep. Ending before Memorial Day, important. So <clears throat> with those constraints, the calendar pretty much is what the calendar can be. Um, the, one, the one thing I did not notice when we were going over this, and nor did anybody else that looked at it, we do have an election day on August the 6th, but it is only at three schools, um, and it is a primary, and so we have had elections before at the schools. Um, we can do what you wanna do. We would need to move, though, our first day back to a Friday for both in service and, and also for the first student, full student day, if we do not want to have um, those three schools in session during the election. I don't know that it will be a tremendous inconvenience. We certainly have had elections in the schools before, but that is one thing that I did not notice until yesterday. What are the three <coughs> schools? Yeah, what are they? Payson Lane, Mitchell Nelson, and Hobgood. Well, it's actually Mitchell Nelson Primary and Hobgood. Okay. Ms. Barton? Yeah, I would just, is there anywhere else we could put the day? And the reason why, I hate to come back on a Friday, but I also, having lived that, it's not safe to have the people in the building. I know they don't come into the part of the school, we don't let them into the part of the school, but you know, we, we are so careful about who we let into our building. And then on election day, anybody that's got a, mm -hmm. that, that's voting can come in. So I wish we could change just that. The and only, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but. the only thing we could do is take one of those stockpile days back and make it a student day. That's, I know, that's what, uh, <coughs> um, can I ask a question? Are the, Goff. are the ballot boxes set up in the lobbies? No, they're in the they're the, in the gymnasiums. Okay. And we would what I would request if we do this is to make sure that we do have extra police presence. Okay. The last time that we had, in fact, every time that we've had elections while schools were in session, we've made sure that no one had access to the schools except for the actual people that were working inside that were working the polls. The people who are outside that are campaigning or holding signs are not allowed into the, the main area, the in, into the school period. You said Mitchell Nielsen <coughs> Primary, Case and Lane. And Hobgood. Hobgood. And Hobgood. Mm -hmm. Well, I do feel better if you're going to have extra police yeah. there. I mean, and, that, I, and I'll check on that. I, I, really, Miss Barton, with today, I didn't have time to check with them, but I don't yeah. think it'll be a problem. I, I, I don't think at all. Do. They'll do it. What What is the Mr. Shackley? Mm -hmm. What is the fire hall on Jones Boulevard being used for? It, uh, inspector, fire inspectors. Okay. So, so they're still. It's, uh, it's occupied. So. Okay. All right. Mr. Ballard? So just to be clear, our options are to close those three schools all day. No, you have to close everybody. You, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Wouldn't you have to close everybody? Yes, yeah. you would. Okay, so right. we'd have to close the whole district down right. for that day. Or we increase security and everybody stays open. Are right. Are those the two options? Right. Or two. We, we would have, or we would we'd have to take, and I, I really, um, safety is my biggest thing, and I understand that, but, but I do think with it just being the three schools. And I think if we can, I think the police department as secure as they are with us on the ball game days and as cooperative as they are, I, I think, um, and, I, and, and again, I didn't have time to run it by any teachers or principals, but my bet is that they would say, keep the in-service day and let's just increase security at, at those particular schools. I feel comfortable with that. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Is this a, is this a primary? It's a primary. Well, well that's the, the municipal. Sixth is a city election. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's what? City, it's what? City general election, too. So. Okay. Oh, it's your election. Even school board election. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's yours. Okay. Who voted that? Yours. Well, what was listed, <laughs> what was listed is primary, and that's what we yeah. get checked on. Yeah, it's listed as primary, but the primary is March. Um, so it's, it's municipal elections. 
So you, right. yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Are Ballard. You, so do you need to just adjust the, the schedule to say, well, you don't need to adjust I, it. I it wouldn't adjust it if we leave it that way. Yeah, okay. Can I, may I ask a question about December? Yes. Okay. I know we're always endeavoring to balance the schedule, okay, but, you know, in increasing the classroom time. Uh, what is the half day necessary for Friday, December the 18th? We have Why to have 180 day? student days. Okay. I had originally, April, um, Zavisa works very closely with us when we're designing this because she has all those rules and regs. And originally I had put that this year, we have a full day on Thursday and we're out on Friday, the half day we don't have. But, and I had done that and she corrected me and told me we had to have that. Interestingly enough, I was with the principal when she told me that and he said, well, realistically, I don't think that'll be a problem. So we, we used to go half days. We're not going to the half day this year. Um, but I, I, we have to have that day for the 180 days or we have to back up a day or go forward a day past Memorial Day. So will December the 18th be a half day or a whole day then? It'll be a half day. Okay. But it counts as, as a right. as it counts one as of the full. days that you get a, the total, what, 180? 180. Mm -hmm. right. We have to have a half. It used to be three hours and 16 minutes, and now the way it reads is we have to have a half of the time, half of a day for it to count as a full day, so we'll have that. It just seems, okay, well, I understand what you're doing. It just seems like the the other collateral issue is that for parents. Right. They have to schedule a half day for parents. So. Which would be why we did not close early today partly. <laughs> yes, good call. Well, yeah. they got to schedule for an all, a whole day. If it was a half day or a whole, they still got to make the adjustments. Speaking of Grand Paul. Right, well, that's what I was going to say. I was going <laughs> to thank you for continuing to stay with the full days off instead of the random half day in the middle of the week. As a former city schools parent, and current county parent, I can tell you those half days are not pleasant. I know that from teachers they're not, but from a parent perspective too, they're yeah, very no. difficult. Oh, we have a half a day on December the 18th. Right. Do we have another half, we have a mm -hmm. half day on Is the last July day 30th? Half? No, we're, we're the, the last full day will be on the Friday, the 21st of May. So that way we're finished before Memorial Day. We do not go back after Memorial Day. No, what I'm saying is we, July 30th is a half a day. Mm -hmm. you start with July 30th is a half day for students, right. right. Okay. Right. All right. Other questions? I did. Ms. You Barton. mentioned um, something that made me think about you know, historically, we've always done the half day and the county's always done two hours. And you mentioned that there was a, now there is a law that says that we have to go at least a half day for it to count as a full. I'm just all, asking. All I, I can know. tell you, Ms. Barton, is, is we know we're legal. I'm sorry, what? We know we're legal. Okay. Why not just do a full day those days? Well, I think on, well, first of all, on the 30th, that half day is the day when the students, it's their first day. And so there are a couple things that typically happen there. One is, and we try to get this finished before that half day, but in case there are extra students that come in and register after that, it gives us that chance to ad adapt. The other thing is, it that first half day really gets the students into the classroom, they meet the teachers, they start their routines, they learn where the lunchroom is, they learn where the gym is. And so typically we've always had that very first day of school as a half day and it seems to work really well. There just needs to be that adjustment time mm -hmm. and that provides that and that also gives a chance if you do have to shift classrooms or if you do have to move chairs or whatever you need to do, you can do that. So uh, that half day there doesn't concern me. I, I'm not really concerned about the half day at Christmas. I don't particularly like it, but I like it a lot better than I would have it someplace else. And, and especially since the county is taking that as a half day um, and, it is a, and it is a Friday, then I think it's easier to live with that than it would be um, if, it, if it were someplace in the, in the calendar. I like it because it's a good day to have a Christmas party on half. <laughs> what I liked when I was in yeah. school. All 
All right, other questions? All right, do we have a motion then to approve the calendar as printed? So moved, move. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. LaRoche. We have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Goff. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to reports and information. Um, and with your reports and information, I do want to, as far as your, your numbers, we are up 257 students now from last year, and we continue to add. Um, in fact, we were talking with a couple of principals. It's entirely possible. If you look at Irma Siegel, for example, they're at 20.48. When they hit 20.5, then we'll be bringing another teacher in there. Um, we are hoping that that does not happen, and it, we shouldn't have a problem with that. What the law says is when we hit the 20.5 for the K-3, then we have to hire a teacher within 10 days. Um, we should be fine because we know that we're going to have December graduates that are coming on board, and I've also had some excellent possibilities from out of state. So I don't think we will hit that, but if we do, we'll be within the 10 days. But that really is the, the main thing about this report is just that we are at 257 students last year. Any questions about that one? All right. Okay. Your next report it is about your expenditures and your GP and your revenue. And if you have any questions about this report, please get in touch with Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent of that report. <laughs> and, and those are the reports. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> I thought I thought maybe Ralph was going to tell us. That. Can we get him on the phone right now? So yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Anything else coming before the board tonight, Mr. Ballard? I would just like to give a shout out to the City Foundation Board and the great work they're doing in preparing for the gala that's coming up, the Education and Excellence Gala that's coming up January 24th. And that's the big fundraiser that opens the door for so many opportunities for our teachers and students to receive grants. And I would just encourage you to get the word out, encourage you to attend, and to encourage you to be all about this event because it's gonna be, uh, well, last year we gave out $83,000 and we hope we can do better than that this year. And it, a lot of it depends on how we do with this gala, so. Well, and just to remind everybody, we are honoring, uh, we, the foundation is honoring uh, Collier Smith, our yeah. former colleague, which is a well-deserved honor. And uh, everyone we've talked to is so excited to be involved in it. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunities for people to show their support for Collier and our school system um, by, by getting tables and sponsorships for the event. Okay. Ms. Barton, did you have a question? I, a comment and a question okay. about that. Uh, first, with basketball season being over, I just want to thank our principals, our teachers, our coaches. Uh, it's a lot of work, a, a lot of extra work, and they do it so well, and now it's become uh, secondhand to them because we've done it for so long. But it's just, a, it's, I can tell you, that's a long day to have a home basketball game. And <laughs> I feel for those high school principals when, I, when we were doing that. Um, also, when will the textbook adoption process start for language arts? Uh, it is already in the process of starting, but if you'll remember that we did adopt last year, and right. so we're gonna take a look at that. But that's happening, I believe they're meeting, oh, I don't know whether it's this month or next month. So when you say we adopted last year, does that mean there's a possibility that is what we would keep as our adoption? There's always that possibility because it's on the list. It's one of the ones on the list uh, that we can adopt. <clears throat> Okay. I, I would like to thank Mr. Shacklett. Um, I talked with Scott Campbell today, and we're expecting those computers in right after Christmas. So that's, thank you for your work on that, and I appreciate very much the council and, and the mayor's support with that. But thank you for being our liaison, liaison with that. Any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, I wanna, I, I, I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I did. I want to thank Lisa for the candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. All right, any, anything else to come before this board of importance? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Lisa, thank you very much. Say, we all just, thank you. That was you. not just him. <laughs> I know, I know. You Marriage. must have gone to the Christmas parade on Sunday. My <laughs> <laughs> kids had garbage bags full of candy for that. <laughs> all right, if no, nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Have a second. Second. Thank you, and good night. Good night.